So we've got 2002 Dodge Durango. And it's got the 4.7 liter engine in it. The water pump is leaking. I've got this fan loose. Now, you can use a tool to, to pop this nut loose on there. It turns just a normal unscrew counterclockwise uh, turning situation there. Now, I've got some really big wrenches. So I can put this wrench on there before you take the belt off, okay? And just tap it a couple of times with a hammer. And that nut just pops right loose. They're normally not that tight. The engine turns the other way and it tightens all the time. So it's pretty easy to get off. All right, so I got a new water pump from O'Reilly. This is a lifetime warranty one, and it's an O-ring style. Now, when you get to working on this thing, before you can do anything, you have to take this tank off the top. It has two 10 millimeter bolts in it. So disconnect those lines, do that last, okay? Take these wires, take the bolts out, and then disconnect these two hoses because it's gonna leak. Now, I didn't think it's gonna leak, I don't think it's supposed to, but these two did. So you just have to put it over here on its side. Now this one here just had water in it because all the antifreeze leaked out. All right, so yeah. So get a good idea of what that hose routing looks like. Now this one's real nice. They've got a picture of a hose routing here for the 4.7, so it's not a problem. Uh, the other thing I did was is I took this hose off here. Okay, and when you do that, you want to inspect your radiator cap, and if it's messed up like this one is, it needs to be replaced. This radiator cap is jacked. So, we'll get a new one. Alright, from here I'll just take you along for the ride. Now, this has a cooling, uh, auxiliary cooling fan on it. Uh, you always want to be careful when you take these fans off. So when it falls off, it doesn't ding in your radiator and cut something and cause a problem. So just put your hand on the back of it. If that's not good enough, you can put a piece of cardboard or a blanket or a sheet or something here to stop it from falling. Because it's, it's not light. I mean, it's got a few pounds of weight in it. So it's going to want to drop like a dead weight unannounced. So you get it to the end. There we go, so I did it without dropping it. So that's a nice deal. All right, so we got rid of that. So now we need to deal with this idler pulley. I didn't pay much mind to what it was. It's probably a 15. Yeah, 15 is fine. 15 millimeter on that. And we've got a big old long ratchet wrench for that deal. And they make a kit and a tool for everything. So, all right, so when you uh, get after this idler pulley here, you're going to turn it clockwise and release that pressure, okay? And find a place, usually a smooth pulley is going to be the best one to slide off. So slide it off, and the next thing you want to do is keep track of where your belt is. Now you want to put your belt back on the same rotation. I don't see any numbers or lettering or anything on this belt. So the easiest way to deal with that is to get a marker. Okay, get a marker or something, some way to mark it, and just put some marks on the outside so that you know. And if you want, you can put an arrow on there, like that, and mark it so that that goes out. It's not going to bother anything. Um, that paint and stuff, it'll just come off after a while. So, so just get rid of this and get the belt out of the way. Preferably don't get antifreeze and all kinds of junk on it. But this thing here, because the rear, because that pulley on the bearing on the water pump, the bearing went out. So all the water was shooting out there and the belt got fried anyway. So there's nothing you can do about that. So this idler pulley is going to have to come off. Now you've got some bolts down here uh, that are inaccessible. And I'm just going to leave that, that one there. 
Let me get me a, something for this. Looks like we don't have enough space for that. So I'm gonna need my 15 millimeter. Get a different one. Yeah, there's not enough space for a power tool in there for that, so let's have to get after this one. And when you have these pulleys, before you get them loose, you want to check them. You see this one here, it's, see how it stopped real fast? That one there should be replaced. Probably won't get replaced in this case here. When you take these idler pulleys off, if you haven't mess with them before or you're working on a strange vehicle or whatever always be careful and keep track of all the stuff that comes off because sometimes they have little bushings and whatnot in there adapters to make one idler pulley fit a different model so just keep track of that yep this one only has a washer on it and you can see let's see here that one feels fine it looks fine you can see that there's a little bit of grease coming out of it, but that'll be fine. Probably won't be replacing much on this car here. Just get the water pump done and move along. All right, so those look like they're all 14s. I think I can get them in there with some, some power tools. Anticipate there to be at least a little bit of water coming out. So put something down there to catch. Now, well, that's not a 14, is it? Dang. They all felt like they were 14. Hold on a minute. Oops. <laughs> I like to keep track of where these little fellers come out from because sometimes they're all different lengths, but we'll, we'll check that. That one's a shorty. That one's long. It's got a lot of bolts in it. Some of them are tight. That one's got water coming out. Now, if you're really concerned about bolt length and everything you can pull some of them out like this and put them straight into the other pump immediately and you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up Let's see if I can get this down there my lights in the way get the light to set right there we go Battery's not feeling it today. Probably low anyway. All right, I think there's one more here. There we go. Let's be careful with that fan. I don't want to get into that fan too much. Let me have a look at this other pump. Get that gasket sorted in the right place now this gasket has a couple of ID tags on it to line it up in the right spot so and yep yeah, so it's got a flat side that goes toward the pump and a angled side or a pointed side that goes towards the engine or the front cover of the engine that is and I will put a little bit of lube on here on this gasket. Because it's 
an O-ring gasket, and I'm freaked about that, so we'll get some lube on it. All right, so I got it lubed up, and you'll notice that this water pump has a plastic impeller, and that's so that if it messes up and, and shoots into the motor, it won't damage that cover. So you get rid of this protective sleeve here. We don't need that anymore. And then you want to orient which way this thing is setting. Looks like it's setting like this. That's how we're looking. Orient how it sets. And if you're real concerned about the bolts, you can take them out one at a time and just set them into the new one like this. See, this is a long one. That's a short one. Mostly they're pretty easy to, to get them into the right spot, but I didn't compare apples for apples, but we'll look. So see this, this bolt here is the same length as this one over here. So it may be the case where all the long bolts are the same and all the short ones are the same. Sometimes you can luck out in that way. And sometimes you can't, so. Got one more down here. So yeah, all the short ones look like they're the same. Yep. And some of these bolts had a thread sealant on them. You can see that some of them have a little bit of sealant on them, so I'll put I have some Teflon based uh, white sealant that's similar to this. I'll get some of that in a minute and wash those off. Let's see if this thing it comes off pretty easy. But there we are. That's the baby. I can't feel the bearing being loose and the back of it didn't fail. The the impeller didn't fly off or anything. But man, it was shooting out water like no like no tomorrow. Bad shape. Alright get something and clean that off pause all right so this is the part where we get to do some learning now I have different rolls different type of roll lock it's a roll lock bristle disc okay that's what this is called it's made by 3m we've got white ones we've got yellow ones okay that stupid compressor's got to come on right now not cold weather adapted is it now this one here is just a an abrasive disc okay it's a 3m abrasive disc you don't want to go after aluminum with that because you'll ding it all up it'll take away too much metal and cause problems so we don't want to do that we just want to clean this little feller off so it's nice and pretty So I'm not going to do the whole thing with you. Just hold on. All right, so I've got it cleaned up real nice. Had to get after it with some sandpaper because it was had some places that had defects that needed quite a bit of work. So got all that sorted out. The three long bolts, I put some uh, thread sealant on there. I've got some of this white whatever thread sealant stuff with PTFE, however way you want to say it. So yeah, just uh, kind of just lower this feller down in here. Now, if you don't want to do it with all the bolts in here like this, uh, you can just, uh, I only have a clock the right way, I don't think. You can get rid of those longer bolts, put them in the, in the old pump, and line it up. Do it one at a time. And that would probably be a lot easier because this is going to be a pain in the butt, isn't it? So let me get that old pump. All right, so I've got all my bolts started. I'm just gonna kind of run them in real quick with the tool. But I'll go back around it here in a moment with just a regular wrench, you know, just a regular ratchet wrench to get them all, get them all the same. Cause you don't wanna 
rattle these suckers on there too tight and cause problems. So here we go. Let me get me a 13. All right, so I'm gonna check each one of these things with the regular ratchet wrench here. See what we got for tension. Feeling all right. And you can tell it's gonna pull down on that gasket. And then we'll have a little wee bit of torque afterwards, probably 15 to 20 foot pounds. I think I've got everybody cross. I already did the cross hatch, so I'm gonna go around and check. We got one here. It's on the outside, it's not that big of a deal. Let's see if we're all nice and we're close. We're all nice and close. Got one down there that need a little. Everybody is close. All the same. Sorry about hitting that. Every time I ding that, I'm dinging the Liberty Bell down there. And there we go. All right, so I'll give each one of them, it's kind of like a spark plug torque. Give each one of them just a little, a little bit on each one. See how easy that is? There. You even get free simulated sounds. So that's how we do that. So now we just go back together. Put this pulley back on there. Set. All right, so mischief managed. Get this accessory belt routed back in here. Get on there. Get my tool out of the way. Fish that thing around that tool. Yeah, just keep track of your, your arrow on there and get the accessory belt pointing outwards. You don't always get what you want sometimes, so people don't want to replace lots of stuff, so they just want to fix what's busted. Check my routing so it goes straight over, straight to the top. Around the, I see some writing on here. Whoever put it on before, put it on backwards anyway, because I always put it with the writing readable. Around the water pump, around the AC, there we go. So, so we'll slide this off of the slick pulley and put it on the groove pulley. Make sure all of them are in the groove, and bring that over, and slide it onto that slick pulley. Like that, make sure everybody's happy. Occasionally we have an errant place but it all looks pretty good one side's a little more than the other so we're good on that now we can get the light out out of the way so I had two lights in there Our fan back on There we go. If you're not careful, the back of your hand isn't gonna like the front of that front of that fan. So just be careful with that, because it'll ding you. Just wanna get her started, get her on there. I'll give it a couple of taps. Give it a couple of taps of the old the old tool. This tool is older than me and you combined. This is an old one. Here we go. That's all it takes. All 
All right, so I'm gonna get that uh, an overflow box and the windshield wiper reservoir and slide it in here. It has a couple of little slots that it sits in. So you just set it in those two slots and the screws are difficult to get to, but I'll show that just. All right, so you just kind of set this little guy down. And of course, while, while mine is going in there, the, the uh, windshield wiper reservoir fluid's coming out. So I'm gonna plug them in quick before they're all gone. that stuff get those plugged in there you go success now just get a light or something look down there and line up those two tabs which they they line up pretty easy I mean it's not it's pretty self-explanatory some of that stuff is just got to look in there and make sure it's in a good spot Make sure it's in there the right way. Now this is a part that's tricky. Now why they didn't make this easy, I don't know. They should have put slots or retained screws or something, retained bolts. Whenever you do this, you gotta reach around with your finger and shove it in. It's never easy. Try the different way because I'm gonna do some pliers. I can get it hold it with these pliers. So anyway, that's a good idea what's going on. I'm gonna hustle these screws in there. There's two of them. Use my long pliers to do the job. Y'all have a good day. Please subscribe. If you've got any comments, please give me some. Y'all have a great weekend.